The boy secretly sawed off a plank of wood. Then he hid the board in his sock when the supervisor was not paying attention. When he returned to the dormitory, he carved a number on the board with a pen. Then he ran to the stadium to watch the game. At that moment, there was a disturbance in the stadium and the guards were attracted to the game. Hector took out a bandage and tied a slipper to his foot. He put a wooden stick in his waist and ran straight to the fence. He thought no one would notice him, but the guards spotted him anyway. Hector sprinted as hard as he could and used all his strength to climb over the fence. He ran quickly towards the jungle. He didn't take long before a board appeared around the corner with the number one carved on it. Then a second plank, a third plank appeared. Hector ran past plank after plank with numbers on them without stopping until he ran out of the jungle. But the guards had already blocked his way by car. This time Hector's escape plan failed again. He looked down at the board on the ground with the number 19 carved on it. Then he stuck the board in his hand in the grass in front of him. It seems that this is Hector's 20th escape. The guards took him back to the juvenile detention center. Hector also received another half month of solitary confinement for this escape. To prevent him from escaping again, the female guards made him participate in an activity. His task this time was to train a stray dog. Hector was resistant to the idea. He had a social phobia, but the guard said to him, you just have to learn to get along with the dog to know how to communicate with people. Hector agreed. At first, he didn't know anything, and the dog ignored him. But Hector didn't give up. He found many videos on the internet to train his dog. He went through a lot of dog training books. He made a dog tag for him. Finally, Hector's dedication paid off. The dog was willing to eat the food he fed him and ran with him on the lawn. Hector also bit the dog after they exercised. Their relationship grew stronger and stronger. This gives the lonely souls something to fall back on. Now when Hector whistles, the dog runs to him immediately. Hector plays games with him. Then they play together on the lawn. But it didn't last long. This day, no matter how much he whistled, he never saw the dog. He went to the guards and learned that the dog had been adopted. Hector couldn't accept this fact. He tore the books to pieces in anger. He ripped up the mattress. Then he kicked the bed board and broke it off and stuck it in the waist of his pants. He wrapped his slippers with duct tape. You guessed it, he's trying to escape again. Hector quickly ran out of the jungle the same way he did before. The guards were already here waiting for him, but Hector was determined not to go back to the juvenile detention center. So he turned around and went into the grass. And so he managed to escape from the facility. It wasn't long before the guards found Hector's Ismail and explained the situation. Ismail was very anxious to hear the news. Hector would be an adult in half a month. If Hector escaped, he would be sent to jail. The boy put down his school bag and quickly took out a lighter and heated up the plastic hose. Then he inserted it skillfully into the lock hole and turned the hose to the right. Then he pulled off the chain and threw it aside to find the motorcycle fire wire and successfully turned on the power. Hector's plan to steal the motorcycle was successful. He then went to the mall and entered the tent when no one was looking. After the mall closed, he went straight to the appliance section and stole a heater. But as he fled, he accidentally set off the mall's alarm system. Security soon caught up with him. Hector quickly got on his motorcycle and made the security guard fall down. The reason he did all this was to make life more comfortable for his elderly grandmother. But it's not right to steal and disappear. Ismail took his brother to court himself to get him on the right track. Because Hector was underage, so the judge sent him to juvenile detention center. He was sentenced to memorize the entire book of laws, so that Hector would know what not to do. But now Hector has escaped from juvenile detention center hall because of a dog. Ismail was furious when he found out the news. Because Hector's 18th birthday is coming up, if Hector commits another crime during this time, he will be sent to jail. Ismail immediately went to his grandmother's room. Sure enough, he found Hector here. But no matter how much Ismail tried to persuade him, he refused to go back to the juvenile detention center. Hector insisted on going to look for his dog. Ismail had no choice but to agree with him. But then Hector said he wanted to take his grandmother with him to look for the dog. Ismail scolded him for being ignorant and he didn't let him go without worrying at all. Hector didn't argue but told him that the doctor had given him a notice that she was dying. Now he wants to spend the rest of his life with his grandmother and then find his dog. He would do both and go back to juvenile detention center right away. Ismail gave him a look without saying anything. Then the two of them took the improvised medical equipment and pushed grandma into the RV. And so the three of them set out on a dog hunt. First they went to the shelter. Ismail was afraid it would get into trouble. So he got out of the car alone and asked questions. But Ismail didn't get any information because the shelter wants to protect the privacy of their clients. Ismail had no choice 
but to take the adoption record secretly. And Hector got out of the car and walked to the adoption site. He looked around and couldn't find his dog, but he did find a handicapped dog. When Ismail got back to his car and didn't see Hector, he got out and looked for him. Then he saw Hector coming out with a dog in his arms. They drive away. Hector realizes that Ismail is angry and says, when he finds his dog, he will exchange it for the disabled dog on the grounds that the shelter made a mistake. Ismail was stunned to hear the whole thing. I have to admire his imagination. The brothers quickly found the first adopter through the adoption records. Hector was lying on the wall and whistling under his breath. Several dogs came running out of the yard. Hector watched for a while and then left disappointed. The second stop was in abandoned parking lot. Hector took one look at the dog sleeping in the car and again turned around to leave. When they got back to the car, they found that grandma was in a very bad state of health. She could leave them at any moment. So the brothers decided to go back home first and find a local priest to baptize their grandmother. They planned to bury grandma and grandpa together. But when they arrived at grandpa's grave, all they saw was a big pit. The brothers came to their grandfather's grave but found that the ancestral grave had been dug up. Luckily, the priest said in time that the cemetery had expired a year ago. Since no one came to renew the lease, they removed grandpa's ashes. Now, if they want to renew the lease, they have to pay 5,000 euros. Hector decided to sell the caravan right away, but the priest told them that the cemetery was already rented out. You two brothers will have to find another cemetery. In order to choose a good cemetery, they set their eyes on their cousin's 60,000 euro champion cow. Determined, the brothers went to the cow farm and found the champion cow listening to music. Hector skillfully unlocked the chains, but when they took the cow back, they saw their cousin talking to his grandmother in the caravan. The brothers had to find a way to get him to leave. However, the cousin told them that he had rented his grandfather's grave. Now the plot had been given to his father-in-law. The cousin said he had already chosen the location of his grandparents' grave in the cemetery and sincerely apologized to the brothers. He asked them not to worry about it anymore. However, as soon as he turned his head, he saw his family's champion cow. But the cousin also knew what was going on, so he didn't take it too seriously. The next day, the brothers put their grandfather's ashes in the niche. Then they bent down to check on grandma's condition. However, grandma's health had gotten better after the last few days of running around. So the three of them set out again to find the dog. They searched for the dog in every street and alley. Finally, they only had one last house left to go to. Hector also soon returned to the juvenile detention center. But on the way back, Hector confessed everything to Ismail. In fact, Hector had already found the dog in the first home. Ismail was furious when he heard that and scolded him for not telling him earlier. But Hector said in a very calm way. That day, he saw that the dog had a new companion and that he got along well with them. Maybe that's the best place for the dog. The reason he didn't tell them in advance was that he didn't want to interrupt the journey with his family. Ismail was relieved to hear that. He immediately got out of the car and rushed to the sea with Hector. They played in the sea. It was like childhood all over again. Then they drove back and ended up in front of the juvenile detention center. Hector left the disabled dog with his grandmother, and Ismail told him to stay in the facility and to behave himself, and not to cause any more trouble. The day he is officially released from the facility, they will go on a trip together. The journey is full of quarrels and understanding. Broken and lacking brotherly feelings were healed under the stars. It was through this bumpy experience that they ushered in their adult years.